Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. On Friday, the 11th of August 2023, the city of Lagos de Moreno, located in the state of Jalisco in Mexico, was rocked by the sudden disappearance of five young men who were childhood friends. On Saturday, the 12th of August, relatives of the five young men reported them as missing to the authorities. These relatives later said they were discouraged by the lack of urgency displayed by law enforcement, who said they were slow to start the investigation. The victims were quickly identified as Roberto Almeida, Diego Lara, Uriel Galvan, Dante Hernandez and Jaime Martinez. Relatives and friends of the victims became frustrated with law enforcement, so they began protesting and demonstrating, demanding that the police review the government's traffic camera footage. On Sunday, the 13th of August, agents from the State Attorney's General Office and soldiers from the National Guard searched the area where the men were last seen in. The Mirador de la Santa Cruz viewpoint. The State Attorney General's office later released a public statement about their search of the area. One of the victim's brown Jetta car was later found at an unspecified location within Mirador de la Santa Cruz. The vehicle was said to contain no traces of violence or signs of robbery or struggle. During the late night hours of Monday, 14th of August, a photo of the victims in captivity was posted to social media. It's likely that it was anonymously posted in a channel on platforms like WhatsApp or Telegram. In the photo posted, all five victims are seen kneeling on the ground in an outdoor location with a red brick wall in the background. It appears to be nighttime. Each victim has duct tape over their mouths and their hands appear to be tied behind their backs. The five young people, between the ages of 19 and 22, went to the annual fair in Lagos de Moreno, the city where they live in the state of Jalisco in western Mexico. But after a few hours, they suddenly disappeared. It said that they went to Mirador de la Santa Cruz, where they planned to meet up with a man who has not been named by police as of right now. After the image of the five men in captivity was released, a few hours later, on Monday the 14th of August, a shocking video made the rounds online, which all but confirmed the gruesome demise of the five young men. The Mexican authorities found four skulls and other charred bone remains on a nearby farm, and are investigating whether they correspond to these young people. The five young friends were last seen at a viewpoint where they went to hang out and play sports regularly since they were kids, which was less than five kilometers from the fair that they was going to attend. The police inspected the Mirador de la Santa Cruz viewpoint and found evidence of a violent struggle. Police found bloodstains at the scene, indicating that the men were likely attacked by surprise and jumped. Police also found one of the victim's vehicles, which was found burning on the side of a highway. The car was parked near the shopping centre Plaza Nueva Milenio in the town of Encarnacion de Diaz in Jalisco. Firefighters had to be called to the scene to extinguish the flames before the vehicle could be searched. Burnt human remains were found inside the vehicle. Law enforcement has not yet released information on just how many sets of remains were found in the car. On Wednesday night, the Jalisco Prosecutor's Office reported that they located a farm property that presumably corresponds to the video. Indications were found, including bloodstains and footwear, which suggested that the five young people were on said farm. In the property, police officers found several vehicle and motorcycle license plates. When the plate numbers were run through the system, 
they found that the original vehicles all had theft reports from other states. Police also found cell phones, a firearm, ammo, a DVR and a large number of baggies full of drugs, as if they were prepared for street sales. It seemed like the farm was used as some sort of cartel safe house or stash house. The case is more unusual than most cartel cases in which I've covered, as we already know a fair amount about the victims, which is very uncommon in such cases, especially relating to cartel execution videos. And from the information that has been released online, no such motive for the killings have been announced, nor have any alleged ties between the victims and criminal groups. Though, more news on this may develop in the coming days, as the case is still very fresh. In various statements to the press, the family members of the young men said that the young people were dedicated to studying or working, but in the free time they got together, they played soccer and just hung out like any other young person. Dante Cedillo Hernandez, who was 22 years old, was a passionate cyclist. He, a few years ago, won two gold medals in the National Olympiad competitions. He is currently a restaurant employee, but was recently about to start his own silicon business. But above all, he was a great cyclist. He has national and state cups, said his brother, Moro Hernandez proudly. Diego Alberto Lara Santoyo, who was 20 years old, works as a blacksmith in his father's workshop. He's a very happy boy, very hesitant and shy, but very happy, said his mother, Susana Santoyo. Jaime Aldolfo Martinez Miranda, 21, worked as a construction worker. Jaime was a very happy boy. He loved to dance. He always had us smiling at any nonsense he did. It was our joy, said his sister Anna about him. He was my little boy, my brother, the youngest, she said through tears, regretting that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Roberto Olmeda Cuela, 20 years old, known by his nickname as El Cochi, besides practicing boxing, he was studying industrial engineering at the University of Guadalajara. He is a very athletic guy. He hardly goes out at all. He hardly drinks. He doesn't smoke, said his brother Miguel. The youngest of the group was Uriel Galvan Gonzalez, who was 19 years old. He used to frequently train with his friend Roberto in boxing. He owned a car that, according to the prosecutor's office, was found 60 meters from the San Miguel viewpoint where they were last seen, but without any trace of violence. He is very happy, very friendly, a good brother, a good son. I love him, and I miss him a lot, said his father, Jaime Galvan. Due to some letters superimposed on the video, one hypothesis is that this extreme act of violence responds to the dispute in Lagos de Moreno, a strategic city for drug trafficking, between Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion and Cartel de Sinaloa. Journalist Laura Rodriguez, who specialises in state security issues, stated the following after the disappearance and murder of the young men. Lately, in the state of Jalisco, this phenomenon of multiple disappearances has been taking place. This case of Lagos de Moreno is the latest, one of many so far since 2022. We can say that Lagos de Moreno is the epicenter of these disappearances. They have had more disappearances than cities that have twice their population. He explains that the state accumulates 14,000 cases of disappearances each year, 500 of which have occurred in that very city. Another aspect of the case that has many deliberating is what group is exactly responsible for the heinous video. The video itself has superimposed text that states Puro MZ with an emoji with a cowboy hat. MZ refers to Operation MZ, 
or Operation Mayo Zambada, an armed wing of the Sinaloa cartel who have been battling CJNG in various states, particularly Zacatecas. However, interestingly, many suspect this to be misdirection and an attempt to place blame on Cartel de Sinaloa. Many actually suspect CJNG to be behind the murders due to a piece of graffiti seen in the still photo of the five captives. On the red brick wall behind the captives, it has an image similar to a face painted on it. According to the testimonies of some inhabitants and information shared by journalists in the region, this drawing could be a reference to the emblem used by an armed wing of the Jalisco Nueva Generación cartel. This armed wing being Grupo Elite Delectivio de Reacción Immediata, or in English, the Immediate Reaction Criminal Elite Group, one of the most important war cells in the Los Altos de Jalisco region. This criminal cell of CJNG is led by Hugo Gonzalo Mendoza Gaitan, also known as El Sapo or L90. The image in which this CJNG faction promotes its criminal activities is an appropriation of a logo used by the Spanish punk rock band Los Muertos de Cristo. El Sapo is an interesting character within the CJNG organization, with many suspecting him to be an integral part of the organization, with some even suggesting him to be a potential leadership successor to the current cartel kingpin and CJNG leader, Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, aka El Mencho. El Sapo is currently around 34 to 35 years old, and despite his relatively young age, is presumed to be the person in charge of controlling important areas in Mexico, such as Puerto Vallarta in the state of Jalisco. According to some media reports, he is a close ally of El Mencho and one of his most trusted men. It's speculated that El Sapo works together with his wife, Elania Rosas Camba, who may be responsible for managing the work of buying and selling, as well as money laundering. It is also said that El Sapo is in charge of recruiting new assassins for the cartel, whom he allegedly even recruits through Facebook ads. Through these publications and adverts, they lie to people, offer them jobs as security guards, and then turn them into hitmen or kill them if they do not accept the proposition. That may sound like a reach, and dare I say, sensationalism, however, there are legit claims to back this up. According to the El Pais newspaper, a survivor mentioned that El Sapo arrived in the Sierra Navajas in Hidalgo, where they were being trained, but after the arrival of the Psycho Narco, everything became a massacre. He stated, that was the worst time in all my life. One day, the voice of El Sapo came in, and he said, Go ahead you sons of bitches, who wants to leave? I'm going to give you 3,000 pesos and a house, and you can get the fuck out of here. And at that moment, some began to raise their hands. He told them that they were safe. There were multiple who raised their hands. One was a chubby one who arrived with me. He told them, well, let's see assholes, get up and fight, everyone against everyone, and they started fighting. The survivor also said that those who lost the battle were executed, as well as those who raised their hands, believing that they would go home. Hugo Gonzalo Mendoza Gaitan, aka El Sapo, despite his powerful standing in CJNG, has actually managed to keep a relatively low profile compared to other capos in the organization. However, it's said that he has become a priority target of the government of the current Mexican president, Andres Manuel López Obrador. In the summer of 2022, there were reports that he had left CJNG, or had even been captured by authorities, but these reports seem to have been proven false, and he is currently a free man, 
still working within the organisation. Many suspect El Sapo's faction of being behind the murders. However, as of right now, that has not been categorically proven. Police do however suspect the murders to be connected to organised crime, and to me, it's certainly possible that it is linked to the ongoing battle between CJNG and Cartel de Sinaloa, a war that has been bubbling for several years. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual video? As mentioned, the video was released during the late evening of the 14th of August 2023. The video itself is 1 minute and 35 seconds in length. I have also been told that there are two versions of the video, one dubbed with music, one without music. Both contain no sounds from the actual video, however, the version dubbed by music uses the track Dancing Queen by ABBA. It's only occurred to me now, but perhaps the Dancing Queen song refers to Jaime's love of dancing, as stated by his family. The video is shot at night, in an abandoned building in what appears to be a rural area. I'm assuming that this is the farm that the police discovered. As mentioned, the video also has text superimposed over it, which says Puro MZ. As you play the video, you see that Jaime Martinez has had his hands untied by his captors, though his mouth is still gagged. He can be seen in the video beating and wailing away on his friend, Roberto Almeida. He stomps and beats him repeatedly as he lays on the ground. Despite the video containing no sound, you can still see how shaky, jittery and apprehensive Jaime is in beating his friend. It's hard to tell due to the dark nature of the video and the camera angle, but it appears that Jaime is trying to avoid hitting his friend's head. After a few seconds, you see stones and rocks being thrown at the two men from Sicarios standing behind the camera. It seems that they tell Jaime to pick up the rocks and hit Roberto with them. He follows the Sicarios commands. He picks up the largest rock and repeatedly drops it hard on Roberto. After dropping the rock on Roberto several times, Jaime then appears to pick up a knife off a floor. He kneels down next to his friend and appears to stab him, though it's hard to tell. For the first time in the video, you see a Sicario who wanders in shot and he is also filming the incident. The Sicario is wearing all black and his clothing contains no clues on which group he may belong to. It's also worth noting that two further bodies can be seen in the video. It's hard to ascertain how they were killed, but there's a lot of blood surrounding their corpses. They appear to be the bodies of Diego Lara and Uriel Galvan. As the video continues to play, Roberto is still alive, and once again, it appears that Jaime is cutting him with a knife. At around a minute into the video, the cameraman then walks closer to get a better shot of what is going on. This confirms that Jaime is indeed killing his friend Roberto with the knife. He jams the blade into the side of Roberto's neck, which instantly causes blood to puddle on the concrete floor. Jaime doesn't appear to have much strength due to his prior beating and the apprehension, guilt and remorse of killing his friend. He uses both hands and his body weight to drive a knife deeper into Roberto's neck. He pushes so hard that the razor sharp blade comes out of the other side of his neck. He then slices in an upwards motion which cuts through Roberto's throat. Instead of slashing the throat like a regular beheading, he stabbed through it, and then pulled the blade up and sliced. 
Roberto is now essentially partially decapitated. Jaime then looks up at the camera for a slight second, with fear and remorse in his eyes. He then resumes to slicing away at Roberto, presumably trying to cut through the spine to behead him. This is where the video ends. I cannot begin to describe the cruelty on display in this video. It simply cannot be summarised into words. Usually, such cartel videos follow a very familiar trend, but this one feels different. I do wonder whether there were some serious personal issues between the killers and the victims, more so than just business for lack of a better description. I also wonder whether these young men have refused to work for the responsible cartel, which takes us back to El Sapo, who seemed to have used a similar method at the supposed CJNG training camp in Hidalgo. He made those who refused to work fight it out, before eventually killing them. It's also worth noting, a video also made the rounds on social media, where the family members were made aware of the boy's demise. The sounds of shrieking and crying of grieving family members is utterly haunting, almost worse than any sound in the videos that I've covered for this channel. Quite frankly, this case is completely and utterly depressing. It's weird because when you have a case like this when you know a little more about the victims, I think you try to put yourself in their shoes, you try to relate to them, and I know it sounds really silly, but knowing that two of the young men were boxing fans who trained, it kind of spoke to me. In a, I, I love, I love boxing myself. I train, and you know, I'm sure these guys a couple of weeks ago were watching Errol Spence Jr. versus Terence Crawford, one of the biggest fights of the year, just like I was, and I'm sure they were looking forward to seeing their own Canelo Alvarez of course born in Guadalajara in Jalisco. He's fighting next month, you know, he is Jalisco's representative in boxing and in sports. You know, as boxing fans, I'm sure they marked that date off on their calendar, you know? It's kind of messed up, it's kind of messed up. Um, I don't really know what else to add to this case. It seems that Jaime was killed off camera, he was the last to be killed. And as of right now, as of recording this video, uh, no suspects have been detained uh, for this for these murders. So yeah, um, messed up, depressing, utterly depressing. But yeah, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you can enjoy this sort of content. If you want to get in touch, my links will be in the pinned comment, my Twitter, you can DM me, also my Twitch will be in the pinned comment. But um, I think I'm going to end this video here. As always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.